Okay, let's talk about the second half of 7b, which is independent versus dependent events. Now just think about what the words mean. Um, dependent means that you depend on something else. Whatever's going on is dependent on something else. Independent means it doesn't matter what's going on around you or what has happened before or since. It is just completely independent. Okay, so let's go ahead and start some definitions. Um, so the definition of an independent is if the outcome of one event does not affect the probability of other events. Okay, now let's think about what that means. If you roll a dice twice, okay, if you roll it once and then pick it up and roll it again, whatever happened on the first roll doesn't impact the second roll. Um, some other examples from things that we've looked at are um, flipping coins. Okay, if I flip a coin and it's a head and then I flip it again, what happens the second time has nothing to do with what happened the first time. They are independent. Drawing a card. If I draw a card and then put it back in the deck and shuffle them and pull them again, what happened the first time has nothing to do with what happened the second time. Okay, so these are what are called AND probabilities. If you have AND probabilities for independent events, there is a formula. The probability of A and B happening is just the probability of A times the probability of B. Now I want you to think back on this as we go through this. This is going to be exactly what we did in the multiplication principle. Okay, so if you're thinking, think on those terms. This is not something new. This is something that we've done before and we're applying it to um, probability. Okay, so let's consider the 36 equally likely outcomes from rolling two dice. We've looked at this table multiple times, and so using the diagram, we want to find the probability that both dice land on a five. Okay, well, the only one here where they're both fives is this. We know there are 36 equally likely outcomes there is one way out of those 36 that you can get a 5 and a 5. Okay, now let's look at it a different way. These are 5 and 5, so let's break it down into the probability that the first one lands on a 5 and the probability that the second one lands on a 5. So the probability that the first one lands on a 5 is this row here. Those are all the ones. Again, there are 36 equally likely outcomes. So this is 6 out of 36. The probability that the second one lands on a 5, that is all these here where the second number is a 5. And the probability here is 6 out of 36. Now, this is where you're going to want to know how to deal with your calculator. And um, mine, I will show you what mine is. And on, um, on all calculators, there's something similar to this. So let me clear what's going on. You can tell I did this yesterday. Okay, if I want to do... 6 divided by 36 times 6 over 36. So 6 divided by 36 times 6 divided by 36. And I get this decimal. Well, we're dealing with fractions, so we're going to look at this in fractions. Now, on my calculator, if I have hit math, enter, enter, that automatically reduces it to a reduced fraction. Now, chances are on your calculator, you're going to have, for your calculator, you're going to have some button that looks like this. Which means you're going to be able to go back and forth between fraction and decimal. If you have a graphing calculator, it's math, enter, enter. If you have a scientific, it's going to be something along this nature. 
or perhaps you can, there's a setting <coughs> that puts it into fractions. You're going to have to look at the, uh, the manual or something of that nature. <coughs> okay, well, we know from doing that multiplication, it's 1 over 36. And also recall that if you're multiplying fraction, if I have fraction A over B times C over D, then I just multiply straight across. So that is AC over BD, and then if it can be reduced. Now, this is one where your knowledge of fractions may help you or not. If I were to do this, 6 over 36 reduces to 1 over 6. So if I multiply straight across, that becomes 1 over 36. Now, this is something that we've looked at before, so let, let's see how it works here and how it ties in to the, um, the multiplication principle. Okay, so consider eight equally likely gender order combinations for a family of three kids. So the first kid can be a boy or a girl, the second kid can be a boy or a girl, or the third kid can be a boy or a girl. If I look at these, these are all the possible combinations, and you would just get this from doing a tree where, you know, you have your first, second, and third child. Okay, of this, though, this tells me that there are eight possible outcomes. Now, according to this list, if I find the probability that all three children are girls, there is only one. There is one way to do that out of the eight possible outcomes. But there's another way that we can do this. We can calculate this and say, okay, well, the probability of a girl and a girl and a girl is each one of these, the probability that the first is a girl times the second is a girl times the third is a girl. Well, for each of these, the probability that a first child is a girl, well, you're either going to have a boy or a girl, so that's going to be one half. The second child is a girl, a boy or a girl, that's also going to be one half. And the third child is a girl, is also going to be one half. So 1 times 1 times 1 gives us 1, 2 times 2 times 2 gives us 8. So we get the same thing either way. Okay. Um, all right, so that is an introduction on how to do things with better independence. So now we're going to kind of see, well, where does the whole dependent thing come in? All right, so we're going to look at this, and unfortunately, you know, in the video, I can't do anything about you playing the game, but what I can do is let's talk about what's going on here. All right, we're going to place two tiles, two blue tiles, and two yellow tiles in a bag. So there are my little tiles. Now, in game one, we are dealing with without replacement. So what that means is if I draw a blue one the first time, then I don't put it back in. So the, what's in the bag has changed. Okay. So one person draws a tile and then another person draws a tile. If the two are the same, if they're either both blue or both yellow, then player one wins. If they don't match, if one is blue and one is yellow, then player two matches. Now, if we were to tally this up in the uh, imaginary game, there were seven for player one. And since they did this 20 times, there were 13. So player one got seven points, player two got 13 points. If I find the percentage one, 
this becomes 7 out of 20, which is 0 0.35, which is 35%. For the 13, that would be 13 out of the 20, which is 0.65 or 65%. Based on the experience of playing the game, so the relative frequency probability, does this seem fair? Well, really no. It wasn't a whole bunch of trials, but these are way off. Player two, one, many more. than player one. Okay, so in this game, the first tile is not returned to the bag. So this is without replacement. So how is the second player's turn affected by not replacing the first tile? Okay, well, the second player bag has changed. From the first player. In the first player, there was the same number of yellows and blues after one of those has been pulled there is there is not an e the same number of blues and yellows so that's going to change the probability now if we draw with replacement and again i'm just going to give you some data from another class <clears throat> that means you start out with the same four tiles two blues and two yellows And once the first player picks one, then he puts it back. So when we tally up the scores for this one, we get 9 and 11. So that would be 9 out of 20, which is 0.45 or 45%. This is 11 out of 20, which is, whoops, 55, oh, sorry, which is 55%. Okay, based on your experiment, does this seem fair? Yes. The percents. for each player is about the same. Now, why is that? Because the second player's bag is the same. as the first player. Oops, there you go. Okay. So let's talk about this and talk about the general theories that you need to know for this. All right. <clears throat> If we have independent events and the multiplication principle, if they are independent, and this would be with replacement, the formula is just the multiplication principle. 
the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. If they are dependent events, this would be without replacement. Then when we figure our probabilities, the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. What has changed based on what happened for the first event? Okay, so without replacement, if we're drawing tiles without replacement, that is going to be a dependent event. And before we get into these examples, I will start a new video.